At ESC 2014, Paradigm HF may have been, oh heck, it was certainly the most talked about paper without any doubt. And this from a compound that doesn't even have a generic name yet. We're talking about LCZ696, and I am with Dr. Scott Solomon, a senior physician, Brigham and Women's Hospital, professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. Good grief, what a, a, a wild ride this has been, and it's just, you know, ESC wasn't that long ago. Now you're here and we have some updated information. First, yeah. let's go back to the ESC meeting. Let's go back to Barcelona and what was presented there. Well, it's uh, really exciting to be able to talk more about uh, LCC 696, uh, which uh, we think is one of the more exciting areas, uh, exciting developments in heart failure over the last uh, quite a few years. Um, in Barcelona, we presented the primary results of the Paradigm trial. Paradigm, of course, was a 8,500 patient trial in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. And uh, we treated patients with this new drug, LCZ696, an angiotensin receptor neprilysin inhibitor. So dual mechanism of action both blocks the deleterious effects of neurohormonal activation, uh, RAS activation, and augments, enhances the natural compensatory mechanisms of the natriuretic peptide system. And we compared LCZ to the gold standard in heart failure, enalapril. We found a 20% reduction in uh, cardiovascular death, a 20% reduction in heart failure hospitalization, and a 16% reduction in all-cause mortality. So this is on top of, I mean, this is compared to what you're going to get with the gold standard. Compared to the gold standard enalapril at uh, very evidence-based doses. Now, in this case here at the, uh, at the American Heart Association meeting, you're taking a look at Paradigm HF Revisited. So what is it you're looking at here? Well, what we're doing now is presenting some new data that wasn't presented in the original presentation or the New England Journal manuscript. And uh, by the way, these data are available online in circulation okay. uh, as we speak. Uh, and what we have done is looked at measures of worsening heart failure. So all the things that really matter to patients, including quality of life, which we uh, have told a little bit about in the primary presentation, but now we looked at all the domains in the KCCQ and found significant improvement associated with LCZ in all of these. Uh, the second thing is we've looked at uh, not just hospitalizations for heart failure, but all hospitalizations. And we found reduction in uh, any type of hospitalization, not just for heart failure, reduction in the number of emergency room visits, reduction in the number of patients who go on to be treated in an ICU, reduction in the number of patients who need to get advanced heart failure uh, therapies. We also found a 20% reduction in sudden cardiac death. And that's important because Sometimes in these patients who have class two and class three heart failure, sudden cardiac death can be really the first manifestation of worsening heart failure. There was biomarker data too, wasn't there? The and there was biomarker about? data. So we uh, looked at both uh, nt pro BNP, which was significantly reduced by LCZ. And it's interesting, nt pro BNP is of course not a substrate for neprilysin, whereas BNP is. So what we see is that BNP actually goes up when you give uh, LCZ 696, but nt pro BNP is still a valid marker of the severity of, of uh, heart failure, even in the setting of neprilysin inhibition. So uh, it goes down substantially in comparison to patients who get enalapril. We also saw a, a significant, very significant reduction in high sensitivity troponin, a marker of cardiac injury. So this this new agent, it consists of a neprilysin inhibitor, which itself at least has a name, and that's uh, Sacubitril. Sacubitril. And the angiotensin receptor blocker. Valsartan. Valsartan. Yes, it's a single crystalline complex that contains both uh, Sacubitril and Valsartan in an equal molar ratio. When ingested, it comes apart into these two components. And, um, and there was a good reason for using Valsartan. You use Valsartan. And not the comparator drug. <laughs> Well, Valsartan is part of the molecule. Um, and uh, the reason you give, you want to combine the neprilysin inhibitor with an angiotensin receptor blocker is that one of the other things that neprilysin does is it raises, uh, it, it is also important in the breakdown, not just of the natriuretic peptides, but also angiotensin too. 
When this was presented at ESC, a lot of reporters, not me, but a lot of reporters were, were commenting that, you know, this is a, a paradigm shift. Is it as much a paradigm shift as it is simply absolute confirmation that dual therapy, taking two approaches to this particular topic, is indeed the way to go? Uh, I think it is a paradigm shift primarily because not only is this uh, two approaches, but they're two completely different mechanisms. So we, very novel. We, we have tested dual RAS inhibition, and that uh, has been effective in some studies, and not effective in other studies. Uh, we think that uh, this is a novel approach, not just adding another RAS inhibitor, uh, but going after the vasoactive peptide system, the natriuretic peptide system, augmenting the natural uh, endogenous compensatory mechanism seems to be a very different way of, 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 of treating these patients than just blocking the adverse neurohormonal effects of RAS activation. Well, I've been covering these meetings for a long time, and that one over there, this really was the thing that got people talking. So congratulations. And for the rest of our coverage from Cardio Source World News, please see our December issue. And for CSWN, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.